An important hearing begins Monday in Aurora, Colorado, in the movie house massacre last summer that left a dozen people dead and 70 more wounded. Accused gunman James Holmes is expected to be in the courtroom when, for the first time, prosecutors reveal much of the evidence against him. That includes nine one, that includes 911 calls and video from inside the theater. For some insight into this, we turn to Jean Cassara as a correspondent for In Sessions on True TV, who's also an attorney. Good morning, Jean. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, the, we, we're going to have this pre preliminary trial. Often the defense waives it. Why, why have they decided to go ahead with it? Well, it's interesting because it's good for the defense in a sense because this is like a mini trial, and the mm -hmm. prosecution puts witnesses on the stand, and extremely important for the public also because there's a gag order in this case, and we are apt to hear things and evidence that we have not heard before. But for the defense, it can be what's called a discovery tool. Mm -hmm. They can sit there and listen and watch, and they can find out things. They can test the credibility of witnesses. They can see how witnesses perform on the stand. So it's sort of like a mini dress rehearsal for trial. They get to see the prosecution's hand a bit. But yeah. how much is his demeanor going to play into this? We saw him previously and his demeanor, a lot of at least public opinion, was shaped by that. I don't think his demeanor will really matter because this is solely for the judge. The judge is to determine if there is probable cause that James Holmes committed the crimes, that he premeditated them, that he had intent to kill, and that he caused the death. You know what's going to be fast Fascinating in this, the defense is going to put on two witnesses, and the prosecution has fought so the witnesses do not take the stand, but the judges said they can. We don't know who they are, but they're lay witnesses, and they're toward James Holmes' mental state. We That's don't know what their connection to him is either, do we? We don't. We just know they're not psychologists, they're not psychiatrists, but it has to do with his mental state. And here's what's interesting. The reason the prosecution fought so they wouldn't take the stand mm -hmm. is that these witnesses have cooperated with law enforcement, but they will not be interviewed by the defense investigator. So the prosecutor said the only reason he wants to put them on there is so they can finally interview them, but the judge said no, there's good faith here, they will take the stand. So what do we expect the prosecution is going to try and do here? They're going to try to show that this was a premeditated crime on the part of James Holmes with intent to kill and that he caused the death. So you're going to see the lead investigator take the stand, you're going to hear 911 calls, people describing the shooter, you're probably going to hear ballistics evidence to match the weapons that were in his possession. It outside of that theater. Is the defense going to come back with essentially an insanity defense, do we think? They have not. He has not pled yet in this case. That will happen after the case is bound over for trial. That's what everyone expects. Mm -hmm. And especially if their witnesses are toward his mental state, that shows us the direction they're going. Jean Casares, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.